Hello and welcome to Longfleet at Home. I'm Susie, I'm the pastor of Longfleet Baptist Church and this is our church online. So I wonder whether many of you have been meeting friends in the garden since we've been allowed to do so. Well, whether you have or whether you haven't, I thought today we could meet in the garden, which is why I'm sitting out here with a woolly hat on and my woolly scarf from a thick coat, because this morning I was scraping frost off the windscreen. So I know it's going to be a bit chilly sitting out here. But it's worth it, isn't it? It's worth wrapping up against the cold weather just to have the opportunity to spend time with those you love uh, where you've not been able to see them uh, for quite some time. And maybe you too have been having deeper meaningful conversations with the friends that you haven't been able to see and you're sitting in the back garden as well and perhaps you're uh, competing with the cold and with the sound of some sort of angle grinder in the background and perhaps a motorbike going by but it doesn't matter because you're there with your friend and you're having a really good chat and it feels good to be seeing somebody face to face again. I wonder what your friendship with God is like. Do you have that sort of friendship where you can just be really honest with him, um, where you can just tell him your feelings, you can tell him exactly how you're feeling? It is possible for us to do that. And I wanted today to share with you a reading from um, Peter Scazzaro's book, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. Um, It's just a little reflection and I can really recommend the book. I've recommended it before, but I can really recommend it. I'm not getting any commission for recommending it, but it is a really good book. Um, And I just wanted to share this reading with you. First of all, there's a reading from Psalm 62, verses 5 to 8. It says, Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Pour out your hearts to him. For God is our refuge. Then the devotional part says this. David, a man after God's own heart, beautifully models the seamless integration of a full emotional life with a profound contemplative life with God. He trusts in the Lord, pouring out his struggles, fears and anguish over the lies being said about him. In The Cry of the Soul, Dan Allender and Tremper Longman summarise why awareness of our feelings is so important to our relationship with God. Ignoring our emotions is turning our back on reality. Listening to our emotions ushers us into reality. And reality is where we meet God. Emotions are the language of the soul. They are the cry that gives the heart a voice. However, we often turn a deaf ear through emotional denial, distortion or disengagement. We strain out anything disturbing in order to gain tenuous control of our inner world. We're frightened and ashamed of what leaks into our consciousness. In neglecting our intense emotions, we are false to ourselves and lose a wonderful opportunity to know God. We forget that change comes through brutal honesty and vulnerability before God. Those are amazing words, aren't they? Um, I don't know whether you've ever had that moment where you've been just you and God and you have poured out your heart to him. You've been really honest about how you feel, about your situation in life or about the things that you've done that perhaps you're ashamed of, um, regrets that you have, hopes that you have, dreams that you have. I've often found it helpful if I've got a mixture of feelings, um, some good and some bad, just to 
just to pour them all out before God. He really does understand. And there's nothing that we can hide from him anyway. He really is like that good friend who you can tell anything to, but who you know will sometimes challenge you on things. They will pick you up on things, but they do it in love. And God is that kind of friend. We do long to control what's happening around us, don't we? And I think especially when something uh, big like the pandemic has happened in our lives, we really suffer from that feeling of a lack of control. And it, it sends us into a panic mode. We desperately try and control our emotions or our feelings or situations or even other people in a bid to feel uh, better. But actually, it's only when we are completely vulnerable before God that he can start to transform our lives, that he can start to build us up again when we're completely honest with him. So the question to consider from um, this devotional is, what are you angry about today? What are you sad about? What are you afraid of? Pour out your response before God trusting in him as David did. It could be that you want to do that right now. Uh, we're going to be sharing some communion together in a few moments time. So what you could do, for instance, is you could put me on pause, just press pause and perhaps go and get a notebook and paper and perhaps have a little think about the things that you're upset about or afraid about or worried about or hopeful about and maybe jot them down and then um, pray through them. That can be a really helpful thing to do. It could be that you just want to go and sit somewhere quietly and just talk to God or it could be that you want to do that uh, later on in the day. Perhaps you've got a special place that you like to go to that makes you feel closer to God, perhaps somewhere just by yourself. Uh, where you can just be yourself before God. Either way, uh, you might want to take time to do that now, as I say, or later. Um, we're going to pray in a moment, but you might also want to put me on pause. Sorry, I keep losing my hat. <laughs> you might also want to put me on pause uh, so that you can go and get some wine or some juice and some bread or a cracker or something so that we can share communion together. Meanwhile, let's pray with the prayer uh, found in this devotional. Lord, like David, I often feel like a leaning wall, a tottering fence that is about to be knocked down. So many forces and circumstances seem to be coming against me. Help me, Lord, to find rest in you and to take shelter in you as my fortress. In Jesus' name. Amen. Of course, Jesus shared his last supper uh, the night before he died on the cross. He shared his last supper with his friends. Um, the bread and the wine that we take are in uh, memory of that last supper. They symbolize Jesus' body and blood broken and poured out for us on the cross. Uh, for us because he loves us. And he longs for us to be in a relationship with him without the mess of our sin in the way. And our sin is when we fail to acknowledge uh, God as God, when we turn our backs on him. And that's something that we've all been guilty of um, in our lives at some point, sometimes on a daily basis. So let's come together with our bread and with our wine. Jesus took some bread as his friends were gathered around him and he gave thanks to God for it. Let's do that now. Lord, we thank you for our daily bread, for the food that you give us on a daily basis. We recognise that although um, we get it from the supermarket perhaps or from the farm shop or wherever it is we get it, but Lord, we might have even grown it ourselves, but Lord, ultimately it comes from you and we thank you for your provision. 
But Lord, this bread is special. This bread is significant because it represents your body broken for us on the cross. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you that you poured yourself out for us so that we could have your life, your spirit living in us and that all that responsibility and and burden of the sin that we have committed and guilt and shame could be taken away because you've taken it upon yourself on the cross. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Jesus then broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In Luke's Gospel, um, chapter 22, it goes on to say, After supper, Jesus took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. Let's drink together, remembering the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your sacrifice. And Lord, help us to remember that love does not come without pain, that love does not come without sacrifice. And you demonstrated that. And Lord, in our friendships, in our deep friendships, Lord, help us to sacrifice ourselves for each other as you sacrificed yourself for us. And Lord, when we feel pain in our relationships, um, help us to know how to deal with that, to bring that to you, Lord, because you understand pain and love. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would help us to help each other as we start the process or continue rather the process of coming out of lockdown or perhaps trying to get society going again and our economy going again and just getting used to being with one another again Lord and we do pray Lord that um, that this virus would um, be dampened down across the world Lord uh, that people who are living in uh, sort of in fear or in imprisoned by illness really lord that they would be healed well and truly healed and so lord we ask all of these things in your precious name amen it must be nice sitting in the garden with you um i hope you get the chance to uh to do so yourself with um with each other sitting in the garden having a nice chat um i will be um on annual leave next week so uh, next week you will have a reflection from um, the SCBA our local Baptist Association but I will be with you again the week after that so until then God bless just been joined by one of our fat pigeons (laughs) I think it's got its eye on the rest of my bread Um, yeah so I will see you again um, in a couple of weeks time until then God bless